to do today. And then I have to skip over some things I otherwise would have wanted to talk about on Monday, our next class, chapter 13. Uh, if you haven't read that, read it and you need to read it carefully. We're going to go slowly. Over. You need to be up through the end of 13. And that's what we're going to talk about next class on Monday. Okay. Right, so we were in the process of understanding and talking about Hobbes' materialism. Um, and this is something that we'll talk about more today. Um, I said that you should think about this as an attempt to extend the new natural sciences to the subject area of human beings, create a science of human beings, and in fact the science of society as well. And a big part of this was rejecting a teleological metaphysics in favor of a mechanistic picture where explanation is presented in terms of efficient causality. One event or action causing something else, which causes something else, and so on. And we get, as part of this, a picture of our mental lives, a picture of our thoughts, as being the causal result of interacting with objects, human bodies, interacting with objects, and those interactions creating sensations in human bodies which get transported through and linger in our nervous system. Hobbes thought of this as our nerves vibrating in a certain way, but we can update the physiology. I mean, we think of this as an, you know, an electrical, chemical impulse of something. So we can, we can update the science and think about still Hobbes' picture. Okay, so I said uh, we'll talk about this more. Uh, but we wound up talking about this account on page 23 of how disagreements can be resolved. And I emphasize to you that this account for Hobbes is perfectly general that this uh, structure of possibilities holds for any kind of agreement whatsoever. And he says that there really are only three possibilities when there's a disagreement. The first is it doesn't get resolved. Uh, that we agree to disagree and hold on to our own beliefs. And sometimes that's possible. So the example I gave, the example I gave was a disagreement in arithmetic, where I think there's one solution, one answer, you think it's a different one, we try to persuade one another, we fail, and then we shrug our shoulders and go our separate ways without resolving that disagreement. So that's one possibility. But I also emphasize to you that sometimes that really isn't an option. So the example I gave was a kind of practical disagreement where there's a disagreement about who gets to keep something. And it's either going to be you or me. If we shrug our shoulders and try to persuade each other that it's actually rightfully ours or the other person, we fail to persuade one another. Well, at that point, if we shrug our shoulders and walk away, somebody gets it. Somebody's going to keep it. And so, that's a kind of practical resolution of it uh, where, where it's going to be resolved in one direction or the other. Yeah. What picture are you saying? Uh, that was on page 23. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. yeah. Well, if you know, somebody owes somebody something from a ring, yeah. and then one says it belongs to one, and the other says it belongs to the other. Right. But what if they just say, okay, nobody gets it, and they just throw it. That would be something that, I mean, so it's possible. That's a solution that would satisfy no one. Right? I mean, I genuinely think it's mine. 
you sincerely think that it's yours, yes, it is a possibility that the thing gets destroyed and nobody has to keep it, but then neither one of us is satisfied. Neither one of us thinks that that's a good result. Neither one of us thinks that's a problem. So. Okay, well, so in this kind of case, my point is that we can't just shrug our shoulders and leave it unresolved. Somebody's going to get it, or maybe nobody's going to get it. Okay, um, okay well, so um, this kind of example makes, I think it makes it fairly clear one way of resolving this disagreement. And in this kind of case, we can't just shrug our shoulders because somebody is going to physically have it. And that's one way of resolving it, just seeing who physically gets it. Right? So I grab the thing and run away. That's a way of resolving it, of making a practical resolution. You try to grab it back and fight me off. Okay, so look, so one way of resolving a disagreement is by fighting. In this kind of case is through the attempt to physically control the thing. Okay, so one more time. In cases where there's not an option to leave it unresolved, fighting it out, physically trying to assert one's uh, uh, control over another person. That's a possibility. And Hobbes says there's only one other possibility, one other option. And that is to agree amongst the parties, you and me, that since we can't resolve it ourselves, what we're going to do is appoint some third party to be the judge. Some third party whose judgment each of us will agree to substitute for our own. Um, okay, now what for this to work, what has to happen is that each of us agrees that whatever the judgment of the third party is. We will take that to be what, what Bob would call right reason, the correct solution. We're going to give up our ability, our right maybe, to judge for ourselves on the merits of the case and simply rely on someone else's judgment. Look, the fact that each of us is relying on our own judgment about what we think right reason is, what the correct solution is. That's what gets us into the trouble in the first place. The fact that each one of us takes our own judgment to be correct, and those judgments conflict with one another, that's the problem here. So to resolve this, Bob says, each of us has to give up our right to rely on our own judgment, to somebody else. And the important thing here, in other words, give up our right to judge for ourselves and treat that other judgment as if it were our own, as if it were correct, as if it were right. Now the important thing here is that we don't have to, as it were, assume that the other judge, the third party, is going to reason properly. What we agree to do is precisely not judge their decision. We have to simply, we agree to simply accept it without second guessing, without question. Think about it. Uh, the problem is that if each one of us reserved the right to dispute the judge's decision, if each one of us continued to have the ability to question what the judge says, well, that's not going to resolve anything because the judge is going to decide for one or the other. And the one who the judge decides against 
is obviously going to think that judgment incorrect. So that's not going to solve any problem unless we give up the right to judge for ourselves. Simply, I might say blindly, accept the judgment of the other, the third party. And this is why it doesn't really matter much, it doesn't really matter much who the judge is. What is most important here, what really matters, is that there be a judgment, that there be a mechanism or process that each of us accepts as authoritative. And the nature of that judgment, the, well, the, maybe the reasoning that goes into the judge's decision really isn't so important. I mean, think about this. One thing that we could agree to is to flip a coin. When we flip a coin and agree to the outcome, when we flip a coin, well, nobody thinks that the coin is reasoning about the case. Right? It's precisely random. It's, it's all completely arbitrary. And yet, if we agree to, as it were, substitute the coin's judgment, so to speak, for our own, well, then we could have a way of resolving this dispute. What's important is that there be a, 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 an authoritative judgment, not necessarily the process that the judge goes through in reaching it. Okay, so, so those are the three possibilities for us. Sometimes we don't have to resolve it. Sometimes we do. Or we want to. And when we want to make a resolution of this kind of disagreement, the only possibilities are fighting it out, asserting power over the other person to force them to accept your judgment, or agreeing, each of the parties, agreeing to give up their own judgment and simply substitute some third party's judgment or determination for their own. Questions about that? Okay, so I'm going to go on to start talking about chapter 6.